Hey everybody, Victoria here doing my weekly live feed on my new Facebook group. Yay, Victoria's Historical Fashionistas. Uh, thank you guys for joining my group in the last week. Um, I started it at the uh, suggestion of one of my author friends um, because it seemed like a lot of the um, videos that I did and the posts that I did weren't being seen by a lot of people you know, from my timeline. So she suggested that if I do a group, then maybe more people will see and interact and yada yada. So hey, Becky. Hey, Teresa. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. So I'm not in costume tonight. Um, last week I did, let's see, I did my green fairy outfit and then I went shopping the next day in costume. I, I wore my uh, Georgian Harlot outfit with the, the pink wig I was working on that's still not completely done. Uh, the pink wig was just for fun. Although I have been binge watching, actually I'm done binge watching Harlots. Um, I hadn't ever seen it till a week ago. I knew about the show, but I didn't subs subscribe to Hulu and I kept waiting for, for it to show up somewhere else on Amazon Prime or whatever. And after three seasons, I still hadn't seen it anywhere but Hulu. So I went ahead and enrolled for uh, Hulu. And as it turned out, I got a one month free and then it's only $5.99 a month after that. So I watched all three seasons and three or four days. <laughs> so I watched it all. Um, don't know how many of you guys enjoy that show. Uh, you know, I love the 18th century in particular. That's my favorite era. Uh, I was very familiar with some of the real characters of the time, and I know who those um, fictional characters are modeled after, and I have read the book that the series, I have the book that the series is based on. Uh, the Covent Garden Ladies, I believe is the name of it. Um, and uh, so I had a lot of background, so I, I've enjoyed it a lot. Uh, There's some things I would have done differently. Uh, in the first season, the costumes really weren't very good. They really weren't. Um, they were all over the place. And they still are kind of all over the place. They never really say when the series is set. By the look of it, it looks 1760, 1770-ish which was the golden age of prostitution. Um, but they um, throw in a lot of different fashions. Like I saw some hedgehog hairdos. That hairstyle wasn't in fashion till the 1780s. You know, I see some throwbacks from earlier periods. So they weren't real consistent. But uh, as the series progressed, the costuming did get better. Um, for certain, um, the best dressed characters are um, Lady Isabel and um, oh I forgot her last name the the character portrayed by um, Liv Tyler um, she has some pretty good costumes but my favorites are um, oh now I can't think of her name um, 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 the other brothel keeper what is her name I keep thinking Emily Lacey. She's one of the prostitutes. Uh, it'll come to me. But anyway, the, the older lady, uh, the really, really baddie. Love, love, love her characters, her, her wardrobe. Love her character also. And I can't believe I can't think of her name. Um, anyway, uh, I have enjoyed the show a lot. So uh, I binge watched that while I was sewing. Um, most of you guys know I went, um, oh, Teresa, you hardly watch TV. I don't watch TV either, but lately, uh, I've been watching shows while I sew because I sew all day. I do have a TV in my sewing room. So if I'm doing like hand sewing or something that I don't have to worry about, you know, running over my fingers and, you know, hurting myself, <laughs> I, I'll turn on the TV. Uh, I wa usually watch the news. I want to keep up to date on the news. Um, and then I also, when I get sick of the news, I'll flip around and look for period dramas to watch. So I've been watching a lot of period dramas. But if I wasn't in my room sewing, uh, I would not watch TV at all. Um, I never used to watch TV. I would read books, but I can't read books while I'm sewing. And I can't really do audio books because uh, I have to, I can't multitask very well. And audio books, I only do audio books when I'm driving in the car. That's the only time that works for me. Um, hi, Isabel. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Sarah. 
uh, thanks for joining me. Um, so I uh, just wanted to share a little bit of what I'm doing since I was just talking about the 18th century. I wore my little harlot outfit. I didn't hear about the costume contest, but I felt kind of funny. Uh, there was a costume contest at the store where I fabric shop at that's only open three days a month. And they were open last week and I met two friends and I was the only one wearing my costume. Tony painted her face, but she didn't do the whole costume. And in the store, none of the other customers had costumes on. So I think I won the costume contest by default. Um, and it's supposed to be a $25 gift card, but I didn't hear from them. So you better believe when I go into the store next month, I'll be saying, where's my gift card? <laughs> I, I wore this and then uh, I handed out candy for the trick-or-treaters. Sorry, my ankle is itching. I think something bit me. Maybe it's a flea or something. I'm sitting here scratching my ankle. Um, so then let's see, uh, then, uh, let me see. I think it might've been Halloween day or right around then. I heard about a historical reenactment in my area. Well, not in my immediate area. It was two and a half hours away, but that's close enough to go. Uh, I had never been to one. It was a revolutionary, the revolutionary war days in Camden, South Carolina. And I am a real history buff. And I do know quite a bit about the Southern campaign of the revolutionary war. I studied it very extensively when I was doing some book research about 10 years ago, a book that still hasn't been written, but I researched it extensively because the setting was the Southern campaign. It was a revolutionary war in South Carolina. That was the setting for the book. Um, so anyway, um, I was interested, uh, to go down there because they've been doing this reenactment since 1970 every year. So it's been going on for about 50 years. Um, I also had some friends who were down there. So, oh, thank you, Teresa. I I'm just getting into that. Just getting into the, in fact, I have it behind me. Um, so I didn't even start that outfit till Friday and the event was Saturday uh, I knew I wouldn't finish it, but I had been wanting to do a 18th century riding habit for myself ever since before I made the one for Kathy Bone last year. I made one for Kathy Bone at this about this time last year for the um, fashion show at Colonial Williamsburg uh, that we did last March. Uh, she wanted to model the riding habit that I had been wanting to make. So I made her a really nice one. It was a uh, hunter green with black velvet trim. I really liked it. Uh, never had enough time to make one for myself. I wanted to do a similar one for myself. So here it is a whole year later, the weather's getting cooler. So I thought, okay, Revolutionary War, the weather's cool, what better time to make the riding habit? And I knew the other women weren't gonna be wearing stuff like that. I knew they'd be wearing, you know, normal middle class or work woman's clothes but I didn't care. I figure, okay, writing habit, that's not, you know, that's not totally inappropriate. Uh, so um, I made uh, the petticoat and the waistcoat. That's as far as I got. I did not make the blouse. I did have a cravat, so I just dug a white linen blouse out of my closet and wore that. Um, I did have my red cloak that I bought at Williamsburg last year, so those were appropriate enough. Uh, so I wore what I had and I'm still working on the outfit. So uh, I'm going to do at least two versions of this riding habit because I wanted to do a little bit earlier time period and a little bit later time period. And, and the petticoat doesn't change. The petticoat is the same. So it's just a different coat or different, you know, jacket, different waistcoat style. So I'm working on those and I couldn't find exactly what I wanted. So I was modifying the existing pattern Anyway, I'll show you my progress. I got a little bit further with it, but I had to put it aside for two reasons. Um, I couldn't find the trim that I wanted in any of the fabric stores, um, and I couldn't find buttons, the buttons that I needed at any of the fabric stores. So I ended up ordering fabric and buttons online. I got the buttons wholesale. I just ordered 500 metal buttons. Because, I mean, you go to the store and you pay anywhere from three to five dollars for two buttons. So I spent like 75 bucks, but I got 500 buttons, but uh, it'll take two or three weeks um, for them to come. I think they're coming from China. And then same thing with the trim, the trim that I wanted, I wanted French Gimp, couldn't find it anywhere. 
The fabric warehouse might have it, but they're closed again till next month, so I ordered that online too. So I'm gonna be uh, revamping the riding habit. Um, I'm going to put some nice trim on it and some nice buttons on it and do, uh, I'm looking at a lot of the historical habits, so I wanna try to make it look as historically accurate as I can. So right now it looks really, really plain and it's not done, it doesn't have the collar and cuffs on it yet, but I can show you the half-made jacket, it's behind me. And then I'll show you what I put it aside to work on. So I'm gonna show you what I got. So I'm moving the, my Regency stays aside. So I'm gonna be changing this um, habit, but this is what I have so far. Okay, so last weekend, when I went to the reenactment, I wore, um, whoops, I have a pin in here. My husband won't appreciate it if I drop pins on the floor. So I wore um, just these two pieces, this and this, and the hat, but I had navy blue um, braid on the hat. Since then, I took off the navy blue because it didn't really show up, and I put gold. But I think I'm gonna be changing this again to silver because I don't really like the gold with the navy blue. Same thing, I like the gold buttons just fine, but if I put silver on here, I think I want silver buttons. So I think I'm gonna change these buttons out to silver and I think I'm gonna trim um, the coat and the hat with silver because I really like the look of silver with navy blue. I think it'll look really sharp. Um, so here's the, the coat that's not finished yet. You see it's, it's open here. It's, it doesn't have a collar, it doesn't have cuffs. But the, the basic shape is here. So this is um, so this is the riding coat. I have to put the collar and it's a turn back cuff and the cuff and pocket flaps. Uh, I'll be putting pocket flaps and everything is gonna be trimmed with, I think, the silver braid. I'll go down and around. I'll have silver braid on the cuff. I don't think I'll have it on the collar, but it'll be down the front and around and it's really really going to dress this up a lot um but i'm pretty happy with it so here's the back view here and um i don't have it with the bum pad or anything right now i wore a bum pad um when i had just the vest on but uh, i think i'm going to the later version is not worn with a bum pad the earlier version is worn with a bum pad so it depends on what i'm wearing with it so anyway um I'm, I put that aside. I'm just gonna kneel down. <laughs> I put that aside till I get my buttons and my trim. Um, in the meantime, I'm working on a dress. When the dress is done, I'll make the blouse the, that goes with this and, and it'll have the ruffles and the stock and it'll look really sharp when it's done, when the outfit is complete. And of course, I'll put feathers and a cockade on that hat. The hat looks really, really plain. So I'll dress up the hat too. Um, but it's, it's going to be really nice looking when it's done. So until I get what I need, I'm putting it aside. And in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, um, oh, Jessica, she, you love that, the green habit on, uh, Kathy. Yeah, it looks really, really good on her. I was really pleased with that. Okay, so in the meantime, I have Christmas caroling coming up. November 22nd. I know that's early, but they're doing a tree lighting ceremony. This is down in Newberry, South Carolina, which again is about, that's about an hour and a half drive. Everything is a ways, but anyway, I've, I've, I've met a small group of people who are involved with a lot of historical activities, so um, I'm having fun with that, and I uh, am really uh, happy and feeling blessed that I've connected with some people who like to do the same things I like to do, play dress up. Um, so uh, I got invited to their Christmas caroling and they're doing a party afterwards and um, some English country dancing, so it'll be fun. But um, it's Victorian, it's Civil War. This is a, a group that does, you know, set early 17, I'm um, 1860s. So that is an era I've never done. Uh, I've done the bustle period, the 1870s, and I've done eight, an eight, two 1830s dresses, but that period from 1830 to 18, I've done, wait, I did a 18, late 1860s ball gown, but nothing else. Um, so there's that, that era 
that gap that I haven't done. Um, so they all dress in like 1860, 18 to 1865. So I needed to make something um, appropriate for Christmas caroling, a day dress, not a ball gown. So it has to be high necked, it has to be long sleeves, and I'm learning all the rules. These people are very, very serious about their, their um, the historical authenticity. And I'm pretty picky, but I'm not a reenactor. So there's a big difference. I try to make things that look correct. Um, to the average person, the average person who sees the things that I make are going to perceive it as correct. Uh, even people who might be, it's is correct enough for the theater, definitely correct enough for TV and the movies because my stuff is way more accurate than what I see, for example, on Harlots. Uh, the stuff I do is much more historically correct than, than, than most of the TV shows that, that I see. So, um, but uh, there's a big jump between the theater and, you know, um, hobbyist and the, and the people who are really into the series reenacting because they sew everything by hand. They use um, the same construction techniques and there is just a world of difference between how things were made then and how they're made now. And I don't know how they were made then because I haven't had that formal training. I have some books, but there's only so much you can learn and I'm not patient enough to read books and books and books. I'm a, I'm a do it kind of person. I'm a jump in and just get it done kind of person. And if I can't get the dress done in a few days, I just don't have the patience to spend weeks and weeks on one project. So you see how quickly I work. I, I churn out at least one project a week, usually more, more like two or three. So um, it's because I'm impatient, uh, but like I said, I try to do things that look correct. I try to, as much as I can, I use appropriate fabrics, but sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes I just wanna make a pretty dress and I just have an inspiration and I don't want to be you know, um, confined by a lot of rules. I, I just wanna create my vision and I do have a lot of visions. Um, and it depends on what the person wants, who I'm sewing for also. Uh, if they want something that's really, really historically correct, I will do my best and you know we'll talk in detail about that. But so far I haven't had that happen. Most people are like me, they just want a pretty dress that looks like a certain era. So that's where I'm at and maybe they won't be happy with me and they won't like what I make and maybe I won't get invited anymore. If not, oh well. <laughs> I'll try not to have my feelings get too hurt, but you know, I gotta be true to me. Um, so uh, if I can find that happy middle ground, I'll be a happy camper. So, oh, Sarah, you would like to see my closet? Um, not tonight, but I'll have to, I've done tours of my closet before. I'll, I'll have to stay tuned and I promise sometime in the near future, I will broadcast again from my closet. I've done that at least twice before. I've, I've taken you guys into my closet probably half a dozen times. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of stuff in my closet. It's a little messy right now, so that's why I won't go down there. It's downstairs. We won't, we won't make that field trip tonight. But um, so these are the projects I'm working on. So the Civil War dress, I started to talk about that. So um, I had bought some really pretty silk. Uh, with the idea of doing a Christmas dress. I had two. Um, they were both plaids, really simple plaids. One was a, um, I guess a cream and red, most, mostly red. Uh, the other one was a green plaid. They were both plaids, uh, but just two colors. Um, and they were both silk. And, and the more I thought about the silk and the more I thought about November 22nd, I thought, I don't wanna be cold. We're gonna be outside, it could be cold. And I bought this wool um, last month in, in my shopping and South Carolina, it does get cold here, but not for very long. So, I mean, I don't have a lot of wool clothes. We wear them maybe for, maybe for two months out of the year. I'll wear wool uh, because it just isn't, isn't that cold. We can get into the teens here. We can get sometimes in the low teens. I don't know if it's ever been below zero. Uh, we're, you know, I'm in South Carolina, <laughs> but I grew up in Maine, so I do know what real cold is. And I lived, uh, I was an exchange student in Finland 
for almost a year. So I lived above the Arctic Circle. So I do know what cold is, but I don't like cold. I don't like to be cold. Uh, I don't mind being cold for a few days, you know, just to feel like Christmas, but I don't want months and months. I don't want winter from, you know, September till June. <laughs> so anyway, long story. Um, so I had this wool and I thought, what am I gonna do with this wool? So I thought I would go ahead and make the Civil War era dress out of wool. So I'll show you, I've got the skirt um, pleated. I don't have the waistband on it yet. And I just started the bodice and I'll show you what I'm making. Um, actually, I'm using this pattern. I don't know how much I'll modify it. Um, it's a heavy wool, so I didn't want anything with gathers. So this is a darted bodice. And I'm doing the simpler sleeve because this one has a lot of detail on the sleeve. And I just didn't think with the black, with the dark plaid that I'm using that the detail would even show up. So I'm doing uh, a simple sleeve. This is a modified pagoda sleeve which is what they call that big wide sleeve. It does have, uh, it'll have a white um, cotton undersleeve, which they always wore. And probably I'll do a white collar. I'm not sure what kind of trim or ornamentation I'm gonna put on the dress yet, but I'll move the uh, camera over now. So this is as far as I've gotten on the dress. So this is really, really basic. Um, as I said, I've got the skirt pleated and in its sewn. It just doesn't have a waistband yet. And I just started on the bodice. So it's got two darts. It opens in the front. Um, I'll turn it around now. So you can see it's closed. I just have the skirt safety pinned. But uh, I think the fit is gonna be pretty good. And it's gonna have, like I said, those nice big pagoda sleeves. I like the shape of it. Um, I don't look good in really dark colors, but this is uh, blues and it's, it's kind of a purpley blue or navy blue, but it's got a little bit of a maybe violet hue to it. And it's kind of a teal green and black. So it really is a pretty plaid. And I thought I might brighten it up with a hint, maybe a little red bow or something. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I wanna put a hint of red somewhere since we're doing Christmas caroling. Maybe I'll wear it with my red cloak, but my cloak is maybe the wrong century. And like I said, they're kind of particular. So I'm not sure yet. Oh, and I have to do a bonnet. So maybe, maybe I should just do a red bonnet. Ooh, that would be cool. Maybe just a red bonnet. It has to have a bonnet and it has to have a very particular style of bonnet. I was educated on the bonnet today. Um, the, bo the bonnet style I need is uh, called, a sp it's a spoon bonnet. Um, so I'm gonna have to make it, I think, because I can't find any blank forms or straw forms for it that aren't ridiculously expensive. So uh, hopefully I'll have time to make the bonnet. I did order one bonnet pattern. Hopefully it's correct. My friend Heather educated me today about the dresses and the bonnets and she filled me in on some of the rules. <laughs> uh, what style of petticoat goes with this? Teresa. Um, a bell-shaped petticoat. I think I'm good on the shape of the petticoat. Uh, bell-shaped and the circumference should be about 120 inches on the bottom. So uh, I think I've got the petticoat correct. I do have a bigger one, which I could go bigger and I thought about going bigger, but I'm gonna be honest, this fabric is very heavy. It's heavy wool and if I go with a bigger uh, hoop, then I need more fabric for the skirt, which means an even heavier skirt. It, I do have enough fabric, but I, I, I thought this was a good size. I looked at pictures of what the other people wore last year and this dress looks about the right size and shape. So I don't wanna go bigger cause I don't wanna like, you know, <laughs> I don't wanna feel like I'm wearing an anchor <laughs> cause it is quite heavy. Um, so it's basically a, a, a bell shape. Um, the earlier period than this, um, it was a corded petticoat and it was more of a dome shape. So um, I think I'm okay. My friend, um, I showed her my pleated skirt and she didn't tell me my petticoat was wrong. So I guess I'm okay. Uh, hey, Betty. So um, this is as far as I've gotten. Uh, this might take me a little longer than usual because I am trying to learn a little bit about the con construction as I go. For example, I just spent the last hour making piping for this. 
because in uh, the Victorian dresses, the seams are piped, which I've only done once before. Um, that's the way they finish the raw edges. And they use piping on the sleeve uh, shoulder seam. I did it on my 1830s dress. I used a contrast piping because I wanted a pop of color, but I'm told that's a no-no. So, <laughs> again, the rules. So I made piping out of the dress material. Um, so I'll be doing that. And I mean, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna have to fudge it and do some of the stuff my own way, but I'll try, try to throw in enough of those little details that it looks historically accurate, at least to the outside. If you look on the inside, it's going to look like modern construction, probably, because it probably will be modern construction. But um, but on the outside, I'll, I'll try to make it look really good. And I'll do my best with the bonnet, too, um, when I get that pattern. I found one online. So I did a lot of research. So if any of you guys are interested in this stuff, uh, I'm learning where to find the more authentic stuff. I had a bunch of... Um, not a bunch, but I had a few Butterick and Simplicity patterns that were pretty and I thought looked accurate. And they were designed by, you know, museum curators and um, Civil War specialists and all. But my friends who do the reenactments said that they were not accurate. Um, the one dress I really wanted to make, they said, was not accurate. So um, I'll still make it, um, but I won't make it to wear to this event. I'll make it to wear to just a fun event or a historical romance retreat or, you know, someplace where, you know, people in general aren't, aren't going to really notice the difference. And I can just do what I want with it too. So anyway, uh, I'm going to do the best I can with this and we'll see how it turns out. And I will definitely, if I have it done, which I should have it done probably by the end of this weekend. Uh, if I do have it done, I'll wear it um, next week for my next chat with you guys. So um, if you like my stuff, please share my group and share my video. Uh, I appreciate it very much. And... I will, um, and also feel free to post stuff on my pay, uh, in on my group page. If you have questions about things, if you're looking uh, to sew something or just looking for something, looking for a pattern or looking for a hat or uh, if you're if you're interested in anything related to uh, sewing or historical fashion and you have questions about, I mean, I don't know everything, but I'm a researcher, you know, I'm a writer first. So, you know, what do writers do? Historical writers, they research. So if I don't know something, I, I, I know how to find it. You know, I know how to research it. I, and um, so I can, I can help you guys out too. And then also, you know, I do commissions. So if you ever want a dress for an event, and it isn't always historical, I do contemporary, you know, stuff too. Um, I do vintage and I do coats. I do, I can make anything at this point. I feel like just about anything. So, um, but I don't copy other people's stuff. Uh, I, I get inspired by other people's stuff. I'll look at pictures and it'll give me ideas on doing something similar, but everything I do is my own, is one of a kind. And I wanna keep it that way. <laughs> So, um, oh, thank you, Linda. I know, Linda, you share my stuff all the time, and I see that, and I appreciate it. There's uh, several of you guys that I know do. So, uh, I don't see any more questions popping up. Uh, that's really all I have to chat about tonight. Um, my riding habit and my Victorian dress, and the holidays are upon us, aren't they? They're coming up really, really soon. So, pretty soon we'll be talking about Christmas stuff. So I guess I will sign off for tonight and I have to find a new series to watch. So, ooh, I saw one yesterday, The King. I think it's Henry V. Uh, it's on Netflix. So I'm going to try watching that probably tomorrow and see if that's any good. But if you guys see any other good period dramas, uh, I'll talk about those too on my Wednesday nights and, and uh, maybe we can share our, our favorites. So if you guys have any suggestions of stuff for me to watch while I'm sewing, I have Netflix, I have Amazon Prime, and now I have Hulu. Um, I don't have Acorn. Um, 
Um, I don't have PBS anymore, but I could subscribe to it if I wanted to. Anyway, so share your favorite period dramas and movies. And I will chat with you all next Wednesday. Bye.